one of the most fundamental principles in physics is that of special relativity. Remember that I talked about the photoelectric effect which was explained by Albert Einstein in 1905. In the same year, he put down his principle of special relativity to explain the null result of detecting the motion with respect to ether by Michelson Morley experiment. Einstein's special relativity essentially says that laws of physics in different inertial frames have equivalent form, which essentially means that whether you are moving or your friend is moving uniformly, you can never make out because frames which are inertial frames, each of them are equivalent. You can only measure their relative speed, mutual relative speed. The other postulate of Einstein's special relativity said that no matter in which inertial frame you are, the speed of light in vacuum you measure is going to be identical no matter in which inertial frame you are in. Using this true principle, Einstein essentially solved many, many observed events which before that was inexplicable. For example, we know that muons, the cosmic ray particles, muons which are created in the upper atmosphere by primary cosmic ray particle, they can be detected even on the surface. But we know that muons lifetimes are very, very short and we should not have detected muons on the surface of the earth because they should have decayed even before reaching the surface of the earth. But Einstein's relativity says that there is time dilation. So with respect to us, since the muon is moving with a speed almost close to the speed of light, so therefore time dilation makes its lifespan greater. And that is the reason we still can observe muon on the surface of the earth. Now, special relativity plays a very, very important role in explaining apparent superluminal motion observed in many, many active galactic nuclei. For example, here is an example of an active galactic nuclei, which is essentially the nucleus of a galaxy, which is highly active in the sense that it is blowing out huge amount of energetic particles in the form of blobs in jet form. And as you can see that these blobs are thrown out from the nucleus of a galaxy. This is a nucleus, this galaxy is huge. And these blobs are thrown out. And we in, out here in, on Earth, we are observing the transverse motion of these blobs. Radio astronomers, they saw that the transverse motion of these blobs, they're apparently faster than the speed of light. That means this, when you observe it, you don't see the radial motion, you only see the transverse motion. And observers found that these blobs are moving almost four times, sometimes six times the speed of light. Now, this is of course apparent because special relativity says nothing can move faster than the speed of light. This was explained very nicely by the English theoretical astrophysicist Martin Rees, who essentially showed that if the blobs which are emitted in the jet form, if this direction of the jet is very close to the line of sight, then special relativity shows that you will observe apparently that the transverse motion is superluminal, although the re in reality, the blobs are moving subluminally. That means they are moving the speed much less than the speed of light. In fact, Martin Rees had published his paper on apparent superluminal motion even before the radio astronomers first detected the apparent superluminal motion. So this is one of the uh, key examples of how a fundamental physical law, namely special relativity, can be used to predict things at the scales of galaxies and active galactic nuclei, which later can be verified. Now, let me also mention here, this being the, uh, the birth centenary of 
Subramaniam Chandrasekhar, the famous astrophysicist, Chandrasekhar, to my mind, was one of the first person to use special theory of relativity in his studies of white dwarf. And it was because of special relativity, he using quantum theory of exclusion principles showed that there is a maximum mass for the white dwarf. The moment the mass exceeds this, the white dwarf necessarily has to collapse. So one of the early application of special relativity in astrophysics was Chandrasekhar's theory of white dwarfs.